Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today's video, we're gonna be talking about steaks. How to read grade steaks, what all is involved, what are all these abbreviations I'm seeing all over the place. Let's break it all down. So the first thing I wanna talk about, thank you guys so much for all of the interaction, for subscribing. I've gone up 200 subscribers in the last month and a half, which I know for YouTube overall isn't great, but for my little dinky channel, that has been fantastic growth. I'm getting tons of comments from you guys. I'm getting messages from you guys. I can't tell you how much I appreciate that. For the longest time, it felt like I was just speaking into a camera, making these videos for myself to feel better. It really warms my heart to know that you guys are appreciating this. So genuinely, thank you guys. I really appreciate it. So let's get right into it. We're going to talk about one of the less frequently encountered steaks that you might come across, but at the same time, they're super easy to read. They're super easy to know what they're telling you. That is a boundary steak or a right-of-way steak. This is LOD, which stands for Limit of Disturbance. That means anything outside of this row of steaks that's going to be marching down the edge of your job site, don't touch it. Not for you to mess with. So anything outside of these steaks has not been budgeted in for replacing grass, or replacing landscaping or screwing up curb or any of that stuff. If it is outside this stake, don't touch it unless you have explicit permission from your foreman. By the way, one thing I forgot to tell you, these stakes generally, again, as we've talked about in other videos, every time you establish a hard, fast rule in construction, someone goes and changes it. So don't take this as law, take it as a general rule. Most of these stakes will all be flagged with certain colors. Your right of way stakes will generally be flagged with orange ribbon. Again, not always true, but generally speaking. The next stake we're gonna talk about is a cut stake. You're you're gonna see these all over the job. So what does this actually mean? Well, first of all, we should hold it the right way so we can actually see it. So the first thing you're gonna see on this is going to be a C, which stands for cut, a dash, and then 3.24. That means at this stake, we need a cut of 3.24 feet straightforward so if you've got a grade rod that's the way you would do it if you've got gps in your machine you would use gps if you're running with a grade checker the grade checker would come over and check you occasionally one thing i'm going to tell you about cut stakes if you are new to the industry go out to a job site where they're doing some land balancing for instance if you get if you know of a new subdivision job going in that's a perfect place because they generally do a lot of land balancing you're going to notice a lot of these cut stakes sitting on mounds of dirt up in the air all by themselves the reason you do that is is the second you knock this stake out, you no longer have a point to measure from. And so you always grade and cut around the stake, leaving the stake until the absolute last minute where everything's correct, you know everything's good, then you take out that mound with the stake on it. Until then, make sure you leave your cut stake, otherwise your foreman's gonna be quite irritated with you. All right, the next stake we're gonna talk about is the opposite of a cut stake, it is a fill stake. So let me make sure I'm holding this the right way so we can read it, there we go. And again, what you're gonna have here is you're gonna have an F, which stands for a fill, and this particular stake is 3.26 feet. So again, straightforward, we're going to fill 3.26 feet at this point where this stake is. Now, I've also put a line with a carrot on it. You'll see this a lot of times, or you will see a ribbon tied here, but they've ripped off the little flags. So it's just gonna be a ribbon. What this line is, is a surveyor has actually come along and marked on the grade stake where that dirt needs to come up to. So you would, on this particular cut stake, you would grade until your dirt was even with this line right here, and that's how you would know you'd reach the proper fill. The one thing I will say about both the cut stake and the fill stake is, an additional piece of information you might see up here is gonna be a station number or some sort of a reference point. We will get into that in just a second. Don't worry about the fact that I just used station number without telling you what it is. Give me a second. All right, so you're gonna have to forgive my little short grade stakes because I didn't have enough to do all of these, so I had to cut them down. Isn't it cute? All right, so the next stake we're gonna talk about is a benchmark stake. By the way, let me back up because I always forget things. Uh, on fill and cut stakes, I don't wanna tell you guys a general rule of thumb on ribbon color because that has so much variation. You've got some companies that will use, you'll call it red for cut and blue for fill. You'll have some guys that will use different colors depending on where on the job those stakes are at. So I don't wanna give you a 
general rule of thumb, that's gonna be something that you'll probably have to pay attention to on your job sites. Because another piece of the puzzle where there's variance is the survey firm. The survey firm themselves could have their own system that's different from your company or different from another job you've worked on. So I don't really wanna to commit to saying there is a specific color of ribbon for cut and fill stakes. So let's get back to this guy. This is a benchmark stake. Benchmarks are generally ribboned blue and they will always work in conjunction with a hub. What do I mean by a hub? If you recall a couple videos back when we did terminology, a hub is gonna be a square stake. It's if you're looking down from the top, it's a perfect square. It's generally gonna be about eight to 10 inches long and it is driven deep into the ground and it is the top of that stake will sit, I'm sorry, hub, not stake. This is a stake, the hub is the square one. The top of that hub will be at a specific elevation. So this doesn't have a height associated with it. It is telling you information referencing the hub that is gonna be right next to it sitting in the ground. So all that to say, let's look at this guy. This is BMK for benchmark. You might have a little difference in abbreviation there, but it's gonna be pretty straightforward for you to figure out that it's a benchmark stake. And this is your elevation. So 672.54. Now you're gonna notice something different about this number than what was on our cut stake and our fill stake. Our cut stake and our fill stake had a number that was just a general reference to where that stake was and where the earth was. So from, from where the ground's sitting right now, cut down two feet or fill three feet or whatever, it's, it's, it's a small reference point. This number right here is an exact elevation relative to sea level. And an engineer has set that based on some landmark somewhere around the site that is a known point. And that's why hub stakes, and I will continue to repeat this in videos going forward, hub stakes are so critical and you don't mess with them or move them is because it's not like I can just plant this thing in the ground and that elevation right there is 672.54. No, it has to be next to that specific hub because that's what this is referencing. So that's a benchmark stake. That's one of the most important stakes on the job site. Don't knock that down. All right, so the next stake we're gonna talk about, I don't have just a straightforward center line stake. I say that and I'm looking at a job site and like 20 feet away from me, there's actually some center line stakes. But for the sake of this video, I have one here. Uh, but it's not an actual center line stake. It's got some additional information on it. So generally, ignore this. Generally speaking, center line stakes are gonna be flagged either orange or red. Not always true, general rule of thumb. And the way you can tell it's a center line is by that symbol right there. It's gonna be the letter C and then through the middle of the C is the L. See how it's making a center line down the letter C? Mm, someone was smart and thought of that, pretty cool. So let's talk about the rest of the information on this stake since we've got it in our hand and we're already discussing all of these grade stakes and how to read them. So the first thing you're gonna see here is 15 foot OFF. OFF stands for offset. You will also see O slash S that will represent offset as well. It just depends on the engineering firm and the guy, the surveyor that was actually out. This is 15 foot offset for the center line of the water main. We have a station number of 96 plus zero zero. Again, we'll get into stations, don't panic yet. And then we have the top of the hub. This stake was sitting right next to a hub, top of hub, and there's the elevation of the hub. Again, this can look really intimidating at first, but when you really start breaking it down into its pieces, it's really not that bad. Symbols like water main and stuff like that, it's really gonna depend on the job that you're on. You know, you might have SM for sewer main, or you might have SW for storm water. You know, it just depends on where you're at and the job that you're at, what abbreviations are accepted there. Most engineering firms have a fairly standard set of things, but you also get some weird stuff where you have an electrical panel. There's not really an accepted abbreviation for electrical panel. So just most of the time, the, the guys are pretty good about making it straightforward to figure out what they're talking about. Moving on down the list, the next stake we're gonna talk about is a slope stake. Generally speaking, these are gonna be staked white. That's not always the case. They might be staked because this is a cut. It might be staked as a cut stake. So it just depends like everything else. All that to say, this is pretty straightforward. You already know what that means, right? We've got a cut of 4.8. Yep, I had to make sure I'm reading that right backwards, upside down in the camera. But here's what's different, at three to one. There's your slope. So all we're doing is where this stake sits, we need to do a cut of 4.87 feet. So if that stake's sitting right back here, where the stake sits needs to be the cut of 4.87 feet. Now, however many feet away from this stake, you're going to have another stake that's gonna be the elevation at the top of the slope. So you know from that stake over there, 
to this stake back over here, you need to have a drop of three to one, a slope of three to one, and where you end up at the bottom of the slope needs to be a cut of 4.87 feet. So those can look a little intimidating. It's pretty straightforward. That's got all the information you need right on it. The next stake we're going to talk about, you're gonna see these all throughout the job. They're generally gonna be lined up pretty easy to find. That's a station stake. These are reference points that kind of give you a location relative to the job site. So GPS coordinates, if you think about a map, GPS coordinates are gonna give you a very exact place in three-dimensional space on the earth. These station markers give you an idea of where you're at on the job. So for instance, if we were doing a long 13 mile road project, at the very beginning of the project, you would have a marker that says station number zero plus zero zero. A hundred feet in front of that, you're going to have a station marker that says zero one plus zero zero. So this first number is referencing the number of hundreds of feet you are from the beginning point. So in this instance, we are 24,500 feet from station marker zero, which is our zero point on the job. So this would be a really long job that this stake was on. The plus 50 I've got here is another common thing you'll see on these stakes because instead of dividing into 100 foot lengths, you can subdivide that into 50 foot lengths. So if I'm referencing my foreman on the phone and I say there's an issue with a manhole and I'm sitting at station 245 plus 50, that does two things for him. The first thing it is, he can drive right up that job site and he knows exactly where I am. The second thing that does for him is the actual job site plans have these station numbers on them. And that's how the foreman can reference something on the ground on the project and take it back to the print. So if I've got a problem with the manhole at station marker 240, what was that? 245 plus 50, he can go to his plans. He can go look at, oh, okay, here's that station. Here's, here's the manhole hole he's having problems with and he can kind of pre-prepare himself or just when he pulls up to where I'm at he knows exactly where he needs to go in his book of prints because these road jobs you have books of prints that are that long on a 10 mile road job I mean that's just how it is so those guys have to flip through and reference where they're at and it's all based on these stakes right here all right the next stake we're going to talk about is an offset stake and I'm kind of throwing a curveball because I put some extra stuff on here so that we can cover more stuff without me having a 30 minute long video so offset stakes are always going to be be set a distance away from the hub and it will tell you exactly where the offset is and most of the time there will be another hub at the base of your offset stake that you can measure from now this is an important thing to know because in basement digging you often run into offset stakes because you can't dig a basement and not knock out the stake so they put an offset in this will have a hub let's call the hub right here those two stakes the stake itself and the hub will be in line which tells you when you take your measurement it needs to go in a straight line from this stake over top of your hub out to where you're measuring so it tells you the direction you need to line up on where the offset is so if we were on that basement job and I already dug the corner and I knocked the corner out so that there isn't a bunch of guesswork on the job of where exactly left to right that that stake was supposed to be if you measure straight in line with your stakes and measure that four foot offset that's gonna put you where you need to be so let's get back into this so we've got a four foot offset you're going to see B slash C, or sometimes this will be BOC, back of curb. This is a common one you're going to see all over on road jobs. That's top of curb, and then that's going to give you, you guessed it, an elevation. So this is an offset stake from the back of the curb. It also tells us the elevation that our top of curb needs to be at. A curbing crew would come in and look at this stake and know exactly how to set their guides up. All right, I hope you guys are with me because I'm about to rock your world. Bear with me. Don't get intimidated. I want you to get a paper bag ready because this is gonna be a little rough. Ditch stakes. These suckers will make your head spin when you walk up to one the first time because it's just like, what the F am I supposed to do with that? It's okay, don't panic, we're here to help. So the first thing we're going to look at is we're going to look at a cut, the back of slope. It's a, th and I'm sorry, I'm all over the place because I'm having to read this again, upside down, backwards in the camera. So cut, back of slope. It's a 3.21 foot cut at a 2 to 1 slope. We already know what that is, right? So ignore all this other stuff. We know we need to cut down at a 2 to 1 slope and we need to cut 3.21 feet done back a slope is done next piece of information cancel everything else out what's that say four foot that's easy enough ditch bottom so once we come down with our back of slope we know that we need to come flat and come across four feet and that will be the bottom of our ditch now let's keep going look at that pretty straightforward 
That's an F. F stands for fill. Two point, what is that? 2.5 feet at a two to one slope. Well, now we're just gonna come right back up towards our road and it needs to be a two to one. So this one isn't quite as steep as the three to one slope on the backside of the curb. Finally, our last piece of information, it's going to be a two foot shoulder. You can see the abbreviation there. My handwriting's terrible, I apologize. It's SHD for shoulder at 4%. Now we have to do a little math. If we've got a 4% grade, that means for every 10 feet we go, the slope is going to go up four tenths. So now we'd have to do a little math. I'm not gonna do it on my phone because I don't have it convenient and handy and everything, but we'd have to do a little math to figure out what that rise is gonna be over four foot. And that's probably some stupid easy math problem that I should be able to do in my head, but I'm a product of the American education system and I don't do that sort of stuff. But all that to say, once you do that quick calculation of what your rise needs to be, now you've got a perfect you know, four foot shoulder that you can grade out and you have all of your ditch information. We just got all of that information off of this one single state. So yes, sorry, let me turn it the way you can actually read it, huh? Uh, yes, these can be intimidating at first. Don't let that scare you. Just take it a piece at a time and you'll do just fine with these stakes. And in all honesty, you don't encounter these all that frequently. I've been on a ton of jobs and I think there's been three or four jobs where I really have a true ditch stake on the job. Most of the time the foreman will come over with the plans, the two of you will work out what all of your slopes and everything need to be and then you just start running with that. But in case you run across one, absolutely it's good information to have and like I just showed you, take it a piece at a time and this really isn't too bad. And if you ever get into a pinch, Google. Alright, so I've got one stake that I'm just going to pull out. This is actually off of a job and it's got all of the stuff written by the surveyor and I'm just going to go through it real quick with you so that you can see what it says. I'm gonna give you just a second to see if you can figure it out. So starting at the beginning, this is a 15 foot offset. So this would have had a hub at the bottom of it and 15 foot away would have been the actual hub. Center line, and this is a water main and storm crossing. So this is on a new subdivision job. There is a specific point where the water main and the storm are going to cross each other. That's what the hub that this is pointing to is marking. But because we have to dig there, obviously to put our storm and our water in, that hub's gonna get knocked out hence the 15 foot offset. That's why also this is a big offset because you're going pretty deep with storm and water. The operator needs to be able to bench the trench back. So that's why this is a 15 foot offset. Top of hub, so T slash hub, top of hub, and there's your elevation. That's all the information those guys need when they're running those pipes to put it exactly where it needs to be at the elevation it needs to be. When it comes to stakes, you're going to encounter 100,000 different things written on grade stakes. These are some of the most common things you're going to encounter. I can't really cover all of them because there's just too many, but hopefully this kind of gives you a good idea. This is going to be probably 80% of what you're going to deal with in the dirt world, other than just kind of the weird abbreviation for things that we can't even begin to fathom making this video. So I hope this has helped you out. Uh, if it has, be sure and hit the subscribe button. Thank you again to everyone who has hit the subscribe button. Thank you again to everyone sending me messages. It means the world. We'll see you on the next video.